that I haven't really vlogged much for the month of May. I did start off at the beginning of May like filming some clips when I was out but I think in terms of actually sitting down to talk about books I feel like I've not actually done that at all and today is actually the final day of May so don't really have time to play catch up but what I thought I would do is show you some of the books that I have been reading or am reading and then I'll just pick it up again in June. I have read a range of titles in May but the title that you'll see the most of on my Goodreads if you follow me there and definitely that features on my story graph is the Saga comic book series because I was just like wait a minute I really enjoyed the first one that I read um, and I purchased that one but then I was like the investment is, is that's a lot for me um and I've been making use of my library so much this year like I don't know why I haven't in past years I feel like no I don't know I feel like I joined just before the pandemic and then obviously they were closed all the time during the pandemic and then when we were slowly coming out of that they were still working on reduced hours but now that I live literally less than a minute away from it like I have been using my library so much for so many titles and it's been so helpful to me because and there's another book I'm going to talk about which I'm so glad like I didn't buy because I've DNF'd it but I just feel this sense of freedom of I can pursue a lot of the books that I want to read because I don't have to fork out the money for them um and it's not a case of I don't have the money for it but it's just sort of it's an investment for me in some sense you know I'm not one, really one of those people that just like spends money here there everywhere so um I think a lot of the time I'm put off by from purchasing the books that I really want to read because I'm like what if I hate them like what if it's a waste of my money so I've been reading Saga through the library mainly because yeah it's quite expensive and I do actually enjoy the collection. I am on number seven now, no I finished number seven yesterday so I've still got eight and nine here. Um, I feel like when I meant to look at ten at the library though they were out so that worries me. So I've been reading a lot of Saga this month which is really cool, really happy to get back into it. I actually went for dinner, me and my family went for dinner at her friend's house and he had the collections, the three collections, the big hardback volumes and they look so good because I'm enjoying them I'm like I think I'm gonna get the hardback after being like oh each single one is too expensive but I'm really enjoying them so if we just talk about books I um reserved this at the library and finished it this is A for Alibi and it's by Sue Grafton and she has done a whole series I believe she got to Y and then passed away so Z is still un is still not done um I first heard about this through the Agatha Christie podcast, the All About Agatha podcast where they spoke a little bit, well obviously they talk about Agatha Christie, then they talk about other writers, other crime fiction writers as well. And I know I wanted to read this so I was just like, do you know what, now feels like a good time to pick up a kind of light easy read. I ended up giving this 2.5 stars, it was just okay, there were just like bits in here that I was like, I, I really don't think you need to put this in the book, especially if you're going to make this a series, but I understand that the time of publication, the issue probably was they didn't know if this would sell so therefore you have to kind of cram a lot of the things in here um but yeah there was a lot of romance in here there was a lot of like stupid stuff with who like the actual sort of killer was and I was just like well it was so obvious like Ooh. but this is about so this is a Kinsey Milhone mystery and she's the main she's a private detective actually and a man was murdered he was a divorce lawyer and his wife went down for the murder but she's come out now and she you know she's always maintained her innocence and now she's it says eight years later she's out for parole and she hires this woman Kinsey to find out who really killed her husband and it's about obviously that um it was an okay read like I will pick up perhaps the rest of the series every now and then but I will not be running to do that because I just felt it really is that kind of light easy kind of not deep type of book and I assume series series might get deeper as it goes along um but yeah for me there's no real like um hold or lure for me to keep on like well not keep on to keep to rush back to this so I was happy to try it the other one they sort of talk about and recommend is the Magpie Mergers, um, and I think I also reserved that as well, I think that's by Anthony Horowitz, and I believe he's the guy that wrote the, um, is it not Darren Shan? Something, something, I'll put it up across the screen here. Um, so yeah, that's the other book that I'm going to read. I didn't realise it was so, uh, so chunky, but I'll give it a go at some point this year. So the book that I DNF'd and that was in my Amazon basket, it's been in my Amazon basket for like four years, um, is The Book of Memory by Patina Gapper. Ooh, I got to page like 65 and I was like, I don't want to read this book anymore. Because this book is about a woman named Memory. She's an albino woman and she's in prison for the murder of a man that she didn't she didn't kill him. It says here, well it doesn't actually say that she didn't kill him, but I'm assuming it is that she didn't kill him. It says at nine years old she was adopted by a wealthy man, a man whose murder she's now conv convicted of. Facing the death penalty, she tells the story of the chain of events that brought her here, but is 
everything exactly as she remembers it. Now, a huge reason why I actually DNF this book was mainly because in this short space of time, where we have 65, char 65 characters, 65 pages, we have been introduced to so many characters. Like this author is obviously not the author, the narrator is in prison and she's talking about people from her childhood. And honestly, we're getting names of everyone. We're getting names of them, their kids, so-and-so, so-and-so, this teacher, this teacher. And I'm like, why? why? All of these characters are going to be inconsequential to the story. Why have you spent all this time telling us all their names? It was just ridiculous. There were just so many characters. I'm like, what, what is this going to do with the story? Like, I was just like, right now, it feels like I want to find out, like, what happened, what landed her in prison. And I'm just hearing about village life. And I'm just like... I really don't think any of this will have any bearing on the story like I get you're set in the scene but I think we needed the scene set like in the first like 25 pages and then you could continue on later if you wanted but right now we're just doing that and I, I just was just like this book is actually so boring to me and I don't want to read it I used to really struggle with DNFing books but now I'm just like if I'm not enjoying it I'm not enjoying it like it's not by force who who is going to come and beat me if I don't read this book absolutely no one so I put this off which I'm really glad I did and obviously I can just return it to the library because I actually borrowed this from the library maybe in like I want to say April or March or something like that and I've just been putting it off because I was reading the books from the Women's Prize for Fiction. So no more, this book is not for me. I actually ended up flicking through the book just to see like if I could find out what like if she did kill him and like what happened. I didn't find that out but I found something else about out about the guy and I was just like oh I didn't think the story was going to go there and I was just like I'm actually not that interested in it anyway so for me I'm like actually it's a win it's a good thing I DNF'd it because if I got to that point and found out I'd have been like okay this is not for me this is boring so if we look at current reads what I'm reading at the moment this is Life on Mars by Tracy K Smith um, a collection of poetry this won the Pulitzer Prize so and actually I've seen it around for so many years so I was like I definitely need to buy it I think I was looking through my Amazon basket and also my my goodreads to read list and trying to find books in the library poetry collections in the library that i could borrow they don't really have a lot of like modern ones or at least the ones i want so it's going to be one of the ones that i buy quite a, a bit i feel like maybe i have said this no did i say that in a book haul or i spoke about the fact that poetry would be one of the places that i would be spending my money because there is no other avenue for me to get the poems i want so i don't know if this is going out of print or something i'm i shouldn't think not if it was the winner of the Pulitzer Prize but anyway it was quite it seemed that there weren't that many copies on Amazon so I was like you know what let me just finally buy it so reading that I only started reading it this morning so I'm on page 18 there's one poem so far that I really like the rest have been a bit like mm. and then I've got these other two um issues of Saga I'm also currently rereading The Dark Side of the Light Chasers because I read it back in January, I believe, but I want to do the exercise from it. So that is my non-fiction read. I need to find an audio book to listen to. Oh, that reminds me, I listened to The Man in the Brown Suit by Agatha Christie. Definitely not a fan. It was actually so long and so boring. I really wish I'd never read it or listened to it rather. 